Welcome back to Newsmax Now. I'm John Bachman with a look at your headlines for this Friday. Firefighters battling a fire today at a power plant in Arizona. You can see heavy smoke and flames rising from that facility. Officials believe that fire was caused by a transformer at the plant. Nothing suspicious just yet. Demonstrators in Washington state took to the waters in kayaks yesterday to protest a huge oil rig docked at Seattle's harbor. That rig belongs to Shell, who is going to start drilling in the Arctic soon much to environmentalist chagrin. And Florida Congressman Ron DeSantis and Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton teaming up to introduce legislation aimed at stopping Guantanamo detainees from returning to their home countries or to terrorism. The proposed bill blocks USAID in any country that accepts prisoners who go back to the battlefield. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry is set to decide whether or not he'll run for president in 2016. A Perry spokesperson says the Republican will announce his intentions on June 4th in Dallas. Rick Perry ran for president back in 2012 and is the longest serving governor in Texas history. And music musicians and folks around the world remembering B.B. King today on Twitter. The legendary blues guitarist passed away in his Las Vegas home last night. Lenny Kravitz tweeted, B.B., anyone could play a thousand notes and never say what you said with just one. Rest in peace. Gladys Knight calls B.B. King a brilliant man and says he's one who will never be forgotten. Such an inspiration to millions globally. And Richie Sambora tweeted out, I'm so sad. He was great to me. We've lost the king. And also making headlines, we're going to talk about ABC newsman George Stephanopoulos. But first, let's talk about Brian Williams. He wants to get his news desk again, but NBC executives aren't quite sure about it. And joining us now is Ike Siemens, a retired NBC News correspondent. Thanks for joining us again. Always a pleasure, Miranda. So, Ike, Tom Brokaw, a former nightly news anchor at NBC, as we all know, says there's been way too much speculation surrounding the scandal and believes we need to just let the process play out. What do you think? Well, I agree with Tom. Uh, Tom's an old friend of mine. Our careers started about the same time. We're about the same age. I've known him for many years. And when he says that, you should believe it. Um, this investigation is supposed to run six months. It's run three let it go out. But let me tell you one thing, Miranda, that is very intriguing about this. Since this began in January, Brokaw has been really the only person from NBC to say anything. And the reason is, in my opinion, is he's the only one at NBC News right now that has the uh, trust from the public. Mm. Um, he has integrity. Well, in my opinion, m the NBC uh, executives are really handle this thing very ineptly. Brokaw is the face of NBC News, and that's why... Uh, he's been trotting out. But I think he's been saying now, look, I've done it. I don't want to say anymore. Well, speaking of trust and integrity, uh, let's talk about Seymour Hersh. Mm -hmm. There's a new report out from him claiming that the Obama administration lied about certain details in the 2011 killing of Osama bin Laden. Yesterday, White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest mm -hmm. said this. A story is riddled with uh, inaccuracies and outright falsehoods. Um, the former deputy director of the CIA, Mike Morrell, uh, has said that every sentence was wrong. Actually, that wasn't yesterday. That was a few days ago. But, Ike, what do you make of all this? Incredible investigative reporter, but he frequently does not source it, tell you who said these things. Well, that's what the CIA director and the White House press secretary are also doing. They're making brash statements uh, with no uh, justification. Show us the reports. Show us what happened. But that'll never happen. All of the information, as I understand it, every shred of it about the raid on bin Laden is in the CIA under lock and key. And you know what? If my grandchildren see this report 50 years from now, I'll turn over in my grave. So um, I don't put much stock in uh, the uh, statements that are being made about Hirsch. At the same time, uh, Hirsch should, should you know, source his stories better. Right. But you know what? Who's going to attack him uh, when these come out? The people that are involved. Mike, let's also talk about the big story of the day. George Stephanopoulos apologized to viewers on Clinton donations. Now he's saying he will not moderate a Republican presidential debate. He gave $75,000 in donations to the Clinton Foundation and never disclosed it. Well, you know, the same thing happened on a much smaller scale with Keith Olbermann um, when he was, um, gee, I don't know, he's been around so much. It was either when he was with uh, ESPN or or wherever he went. Um, he did the same thing. He made political contributions to candidates, and he was suspended for that. It could have been ESPN, I'm not sure. So uh, it's not unprecedented. 
I'm sure that others do it. But for a guy like Stephanopoulos to do this, of course, you recall that he was a uh, was and is a Clinton loyalist. When I first met him, he was part of Clinton's uh, staff. He may have been the chief of staff during Clinton's campaign. But should uh, he step uh, down? Because yes, ABC is, is standing behind him. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? He may step down, but look, he worked with Clinton a long time. Right. You just don't uh, get rid of loyalties that easily. So um, it's a shame on him. He did wrong. Mike Siemens, thanks so much for joining us here on Newsmax Now. Always good to have you and get your insight. Hope you'll join us again. I will be a pleasure at any time. Thank you. And we're going to talk more about this very subject coming up next on Newsmax Now.